Hi, my name is Laura and I'm a Latinx graphic designer from London. This channel will be based around the world of art and design, sharing interesting lives and stories of specific artists, designers or pieces of interest. So I thought, why not begin with Roy Halston Froywick, as the limited series on Netflix was released this week and I wanted to know more about his interesting life. After watching the series, I became obsessed with, first of all, his townhouse in New York City. It's just amazing. Literally wow. And also, all of his celebrity friends and his lavish, glamorous lifestyle in the 70s, which inspired me to create this video. So let's get into it. So how did Holston, born in Iowa to working class parents, create such a household name so young? Halston had creativity running through his veins, but it all started with his grandmother, as he used to watch her sew at a very early age. He began by creating hats and altering clothes for his mother and sister. However, what really initiated his rise to fame was when First Lady Jackie Kennedy wore his pillbox hat to John F. Kennedy's inauguration in 1961. At the time, Halston was Bergdorf Goodman's in-house milliner, which is, by the way, a person who is involved in the manufacture, design or sale of hats. Just his name being mentioned by the right person in front of so many eyes launched his career. Everyone wanted the pillbox hat. By the mid-1960s, he was designing clothes and befriending Hollywood's elite. Ten years later, the Battle of Versailles fashion show brought him to another level. The fashion show fundraiser pitted five French designers against five American designers aimed at financing the restoration of the Palace of Versailles. The collection Houston showed was so effortless and chic he helped the world take notice of American fashion. He also had his good friend Liza Minnelli perform during the show to help out the American side. The fashion show couldn't have gone any better and Halston soon became the face of American fashion. The exact same year, in 1973, Halston sold his line and his name to the large corporation Norton Simon Inc. They acquired his company and creative services right at the height of his career. It was at the same time a transaction that was abnormal and would later come back to bite him. He was a true innovator. His dresses were often made by one single piece of chiffon or silk fabric, perfectly draped over the body. Idols like Cher, Elizabeth Taylor, Martha Graham, Bianca Jagger wore his beautiful dresses from red carpets to Studio 54. Halston was known to always have many people by his side wherever he went, including models and of course his famous close friends such as Liza Minnelli, Pat Cleveland and Pat Ast. His posse was coined the Halstonettes. He was also with them at dinners, editorials and advertisements. It was said that he would travel with 20 members of his team at all times, always charging the bill to Norton Simon Inc, his then investor. Another one of Halston's famous friends is the king of pop art himself, Andy Warhol. They both had a lot in common, for example, they were both gay men who had been brought up in conservative areas and had also both been window dressers during their careers. Furthermore, they both knew the power of personality, images and fame. They were also not only friends, but collaborators. In Halston's later shows, Warhol was often the unofficial photographer and in 1982 Warhol put together an ad campaign for Halston's menswear accessories and cosmetics. Halston was very private and never really came out. However, he never hid his relationship to his on and off boyfriend of 10 years, Victor Hugo Rojas, Eva. Many people knew and they were always out in public in Studio 54 every other night. Victor was also often seen front row for many of Halston's runways. 
Not only was he an iconic American fashion designer, but he also pushed the boundaries when it came to diversity on the runway. At the time, the fashion industry was not diverse at all, and the 70s in general was completely whitewashed. Halston used many BIPOC models in his runways and launched many of their careers, including Pat Cleveland and Iman. In 1983 is when Halston's tide began to turn. He partnered up with JC Penney, signing a $1 billion six year deal. Halston said that his vision was always to be able to dress every woman in America, no matter where they shopped. His line, Halston 3, was available exclusively at JCPenney, which meant being dropped by the high-end department store Bergdorf Goodman immediately upon hearing this news. This was followed by a lot of contempt in the high fashion world. Soon after the scandalous JCPenney deal, Halston was bought by S Mark Inc. He was now under another company and under the attentive eye of Carl Epstein, who is now more known as the person that brought the collapse to the brand. Carl was now in charge of decreasing Halston's monumental and excessive budget, and of course, this did not bode well with Halston. By 1984, Halston was now excluded from his own company. He continued designing for a few of his close friends. However, if they were asked on the red carpet who they were wearing, they were not allowed to say that they were wearing a Halston as he had sold his trademark to his name. He tried to buy it back, but the brand was now seen as damaged goods by the public. In his later years, he sold his townhouse in New York and moved to San Francisco and kept a low profile. He died in the year 1990 and never managed to see his brand bounce back. However, his contribution to American fashion altered the scene eternally. Thank you so much for listening and watching me create this poster inspired by Halston's story. I hope you have enjoyed it and if there's any other artist or designer's life you want to learn more about, please leave it down in the comments below. I would really appreciate it if you would leave a like and please subscribe and put your notifications on so that you can be notified when I next post. See you on the next one. Bye!